Good morning guys. We're quarantine day eight here in uh, Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City, um, Vietnam. Not exactly sure if it's actually quarantine day eight. It just feels like an unending amount of days that we are, uh, we are theoretically supposed to be in the house. So um, I was kind of brainstorming on what the next video should be about. So today, um, after a post in which I made a Thai iced tea, I had a lot of requests for how did I do that. So. Today the plan is to make three traditional Southeast Asian drinks, one Thai iced tea, two Vietnamese toffee, the traditional way, and then three, uh, I'm not sure what we're gonna do, we're gonna make a smoothie, and uh, because here in Southeast Asia you can find Sinto, which is in Vietnam, the traditional smoothies that you find literally everywhere. They take your favorite uh, fruit, they take some condensed milk, and they blend it all together. So the plan is to hop on the motorbike right here, to uh, go to the market and to see what we can find as far as cool and interesting fruit um, that you guys wouldn't find in the West. So, uh, let's get started. All right, so we're at the market now. I've got my fruit bowl and the goal is to find one very interesting fruit to make a smoothie out of. Vietnam, you have lots of options for fruit. You can buy an orange, which is not orange. It's actually uh, green, very, very strange. The mangoes. Always, always a fan favorite. We have the dragon fruit, which I would argue is not the best fruit in the world, but uh, it looks cool, which is why it's awesome. So this one's a pomelo, the really big, super famous fruit from this area. Um, not amazing. I don't really like it. It's like a big, dry grapefruit. Is it the weirdest fruit that's here? All right, so this being the weirdest fruit that's here, this is called a custard apple, or a uh, if you're from Brazil, it's called a guanabana. So we're gonna buy two guanabanas and we're gonna turn it into a smoothie. So she charged me 50,000, which I would argue is not the best deal. It's probably because of the white face. In the times of Corona, a lot of the, the local vendors from markets are kind of struggling. So I feel like it's, it's okay to be overcharged in this case. So let's go back to the crib. Let's make some drinks. Okay guys, now we are in the kitchen and we've got in front of us all the ingredients and devices that we will need to make the three drinks. So we've got the Thai iced tea to start. We've got the Vietnamese coffee um, second, and then I found this fruit, which was not a guanabana, as my Brazilian roommate informed me, but is a smaller version called a custard apple, or a sweet apple, or if you're from Guadalupe, it's called a bumcanel, which means a cinnamon apple. So here it is. Okay guys, so it's uh, Thai iced tea time. Um, I, about two years ago, I worked in a, well I volunteered in a Thai cafe and uh, there I learned mastered slash learned the arts of the Thai iced tea. What you need, it's a super simple drink to make, but it all really starts with this. Cha Tra Mu brand Thai tea powder. So here you can see the inside. It's very, uh, so it's, it's obviously loose, like you can buy these in the store, obviously in like a tea, a tea bag, but um, this is what they call loose leaf tea. To me, there's, there's many ways you can make this, so you can either do it here. Um, this is the Vietnamese coffee press, and it works the, honestly really well for the loose leaf tea. You put the loose leaf tea, and inside there's these little holes, and it will filter the tea for you. Um, or you can buy these tea bags, or if you have a, uh, I think they're called a tea ball, and you put the tea inside and then you can let it steep in the hot water. So I don't have a tea ball here, so we're definitely gonna do it the, uh, the kind of ghetto Vietnamese style. Um, but I tried it yesterday and it, it still definitely worked. Also for the Thai iced tea, um, the thing that gives it that really like nice orange color is this sweetened condensed milk. Here you go. You can definitely find it in the US or Europe or wherever you are. Um, find it in the baking section. Sweetened condensed milk is in almost every drink in Southeast Asia and it gives it that nice creamy kind of like sweet flavor um, that you, you enjoy that, you know, in your boba tea, for example. Um, we're gonna need a uh, pretty standard, this is fresh milk plain. Um, you're gonna use it uh, with some sort of shaker. And we'll put ice in here and we'll shake it up and you'll get a really nice milk foam. And last but not least, you're going to need hot water to make it all happen. Let's see how it's done. Step one, you're going to take your loose leaf tea and you're going to put it in your sifter or your drip thing your drip thing if you don't have a drip thing remember you can get a tea bag or you can get some sort of apparatus that will have the same effect so what we do is we take our cup we take our tea thing put it on top we then will add our boiling water to the mix 
I would say in this case, it's really good to get a lot of boiling water in there and maybe to filter it twice because uh, the tea won't have time to really steep as it should. So if you want the full flavor, probably run it through twice. But here you can already see we have a beautiful red slash black tea color already developing and you can already smell the Thai tea has this very like sweet wood kind of flavor, which is, which is super nice. Okay, so now I've actually emptied this glass out because what we need to do or how you should make this dish is you should start it with uh, ice in the glass before you pour. There, that's fine. So now that we've got the ice in the glass, remember that this is hot and this will melt. So you're going to need residual ice to have as a backup. So we're going to add, um, let's say about halfway because we're actually going to get more liquid when we add it back in. All right, we'll stop there. Now we're gonna add our secondary ice back in. Boom. Step two is you're going to take your sweetened condensed milk and you're going to pour in to your sweetness. Now the stuff back in the States is a little thicker. This is a little thinner. So we're gonna add, yeah, that seems fine to me. You're going to give it a nice little mix. Here is where you see the color from the chai iced tea really come out. Orange, velvety, lovely, beautiful, boom. So now we've got our Thai iced tea. We're putting him here. Now we need some ice cubes. You can do this with a cocktail shaker. You can do this with a jar. You can do this with uh, anything that has a closed lid and you need small ice cubes. And what we're making here is milk foam. The first time I saw this, it blew my mind and uh, hopefully it blows your mind too. So we take ice, we take milk, we add. <laughs> ah! All right, take two. You've got ice. You've got milk. You add the milk you know to the, the ice. The technique is to like pour it like, huh? like that. Uh, like that. The technique is to pour like this, but uh, we don't we don't follow techniques here. <laughs> uh, Tales from the road. So, just enough milk to kind of like just not that much, just enough to be covered with the ice. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna give it a nice shake. You can do the cocktail shake. If you want to get fancy. All right, now you guys can see that it's gotten nice and frothy. That's how we get some milk froth. So we're gonna gently add this onto the top. And it's okay if there's a little milk left over because, oh God, because you've already got ice in there. And voila, the Thai iced tea. That looks great, look at that shit. All right, so here you have the finished product. So you can see the milk has started to separate into it a little bit, but we've got a nice top with the milk foam. So I'm, I'm decently impressed. So we're gonna give it a sip. Oh, that's good. Thai iced tea is really refreshing. It's a little bit sweet depending on how, how you want it. Some people add also sugar, like sugar water inside, which makes it way too sweet. Um, and the tea is like nice and rich and it's something you can go back and drink like time and time again. Something good on a, uh, on a hot summer day, so cheers. Number two, we're gonna do Vietnamese coffee. Vietnamese coffee is like the most famous drink that you'll probably find in Vietnam. They say they drink a lot of tea here. I think they drink a lot of coffee. So how do you make this at home? What you need is the Vietnamese coffee rig. It's really not Vietnamese coffee unless you have the rig. They uh, sometimes do it through espresso machines, which is fine, but the point is you need the coffee as strong as possible so you get that really like bitter, strong coffee flavor. So you have four parts. You have the thing that goes over the cup with the holes. You have the thing that holds the coffee, also with the holes in the bottom. You have the thing on the top, which keeps the coffee from rising up too much. So you like kind of push it down, kind of like a French press. And then you have the top, which lets it steam to coffee harmony. Let's talk coffee. So here I have Vietnamese coffee. I will put a link, here it is. I will put a link to the, uh, in the description of good Vietnamese coffee that you can get on Amazon. Um, I sent my brother some for his birthday. And the point of the coffee here is that you can't do it with normal coffee that you buy in the US unless you get like fine ground or super fine ground. Um, the coffee either won't let the water through or if it's too fine, um, it'll just go through this thing like if you get a Turkish coffee and then it'll be like muck inside your glass. So we don't want muck, right? Vietnamese coffee, what we do. The Vietnamese coffee is really strong aroma, smells nice. Um, I don't know, it's probably from this region. They grow a lot of coffee in the central part of Vietnam. So what you do is you take your thing, 
we put one, two, and let's say two and a half scoops in there if we want to be generous. And the point is we don't want to add too much water to it or else we're going to lose the kind of coffee flavor that we are looking for. We have it all assembled. You put the top back on there and I'm going to use this side guy because we're going to put it over ice. We typically serve Vietnamese coffee with ice. All right, so now that we have hot water because I was about to do it with semi-hot water and that would have been a mistake, is you just put a little bit to start. So you want to just kind of like, and that's it. You just kind of want to like let the like grounds absorb a little bit of the water. See, nothing's escaping yet, if you guys can see. And so now that we've kind of like got a good base, you can push down a bit before it's really hot. And now we have this dense compact coffee. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add it about, I don't know, let's say, let's say there. So that's probably like two thirds of the way to the top. And now we have this dense thing, it's gonna slowly start to go through. Okay, now you can see it's dripping. And we add the top to create some steam. And here you guys can see, we have the traditional Vietnamese style drip coffee. And you can see here, it's really super jet black. And it's gonna be really nice and super strong with a kind of chocolatey kind of background. And now, we wait. Okay guys, as you can see now, we've stopped drip, drip, drip. So, what, uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna remove this because it's hot and we're gonna do it with a towel because I don't like burnt fingers. I don't know about you, but I really don't enjoy them. So we're gonna do this. This thing is a great holder for this in case you are not by a sink. So you can just put it there and let it chill. So I did it in a secondary glass, but here's gonna be our main glass. What we do, sweetened condensed milk. Always at the bottom. You wanna get a nice little layer, you know? A little healthy layer. Oh yeah, that's it. So now you can see we have a nice layer at the bottom. And what we're gonna do, add in the coffee right on top. What you're looking for in a good Vietnamese coffee is the layer. So you have the layer of the cream and the layer of the coffee. If you're doing it like an OG Vietnamese man, what you'll do before you add ice is you'll take a stick of some sort and you'll give it a little mixy mix. And again, you can see what happened to the Thai iced tea. The same thing happening here to the Vietnamese coffee, going from jet black and this creamy color to a nice velvety chocolate. Look at that. Now, you can drink it as is. This would be the hot version. Or you can add ice. I'm a big fan of ice with my Vietnamese coffee. So I'm gonna get my ice bucket. Select some of the best ice cubes in here. That's a nice ice cube. Blau. Oh, shit. That's a nice ice cube, blau. Once again, get the stick, give it a little mixy mix. Yeah. And now you can see we've got a nice Vietnamese coffee, we've got ice in there, and we can give it a try. Oh, it's awesome, it's just awesome. This is exactly how it should be, exactly what you would get in the streets of Hanoi. So, super bitter coffee, you really don't want to add too much water because you don't want to ruin the bitterness. And then you have this super sweet kind of like punch at the end, which kind of like gets it going. So actually, like you guys can see here on the thing, look how much sweetened condensed milk they decided to add here. It's probably half a cup of sweetened condensed milk and half of coffee. So if you're not a crazy person and you don't want diabetes, I would say make your own. Um, ugh, I don't know. Um, and you can also ask for no sugar or little milk when you're here. So this is called Cafe Sua Da, which means black coffee with milk. There it is. Cheers, guys. Delicious. All right, guys, we're going to move on to our last drink of the day. Um, we're going to make a classic Vietnamese Sinto. Sinto, probably said it wrong, means smoothie. So uh, let's do some fruit talk. This is, uh, as I said before, we're calling it a sweet apple. Um, the guanabana is this big version of it. So how do I explain the flavor of this sweet custard apple with the dinosaur skin? I would say it's kind of like a combination between a pear and an apple, except with none of the juiciness and all of the weird custardiness that you would find in like a durian or some other thing that's not normally a fruit. So I'd say uh, let's, uh, let's cut it up and put it in a smoothie. I can say, guys, it's not the best texture, nor is it the best sound when my roommate is um, filling her water bottle and it sounds like she's peeing behind me, so <laughs> we're just gonna get through it. Oh, look at that, that's a nice piece, look at that. 
Okay, so you guys can see from one sweet apple, the yield's pretty good. I don't know. So that's one. And then you have all of this leftovers. Don't forget, don't eat the seeds. And don't eat the tree. Don't eat the tree. <laughs> so the way Vietnamese people do this is they just throw everything in here with no measurements. So that is what we will do too. So I think probably when you're making a smoothie, the best is to take your bucket of ice and to add ice in. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. All right, so now we're gonna add in our sweet apple. Boom, look at that, look at that, delicious. And then you say, it's really important when you're getting a smoothie in Vietnam, you say a little bit of milk because they will just put this much condensed milk in there and then you'll get diabetes and you will live that life that you always wanted to live. So I would say, let's do one blau. All right, that was, that was even a little bit for my normal taste. And I think probably a little bit of milk to get it all kind of blended together. So one, two, good. There's only one last thing to do. Put the cap on and uh, pray that this works. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for two. I'm gonna give it the super blend. All right, now we have our Sinto Sour Sop Smoothie. So this in Vietnam would be called a Mang Cao. It is raining now because it is the rainy season. So sometimes you're gonna have a little ice left in here because uh, your blender's not very good, so it's all right. But let's see how it looks. Oh, ice, 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 ice. A little bit of ice. Oh, hey, that turned out. Look at this. All right, so this is the smoothie. It turned out pretty well, I would say, and we're gonna give it a try. Well, hey, I just might, might open up a Sinto shop myself because this is high quality. All right, you cool cats. <laughs> All right, guys, you've seen the three quarantine drinks you can make at home to make it feel like you're on a beautiful island trip to Southeast Asia. You've seen the Thai iced tea, you've seen the Vietnamese coffee, and the Meng Cao uh, Sinto. So, cheers guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you can see new videos every midweek and end week coming, uh, coming soon. Cheers. Go.